Hello and welcome. This is Iowa Stages, a podcast about central Iowa theater. I'm Matthew McIver, artistic director for the Iowa Stage Theater Company. Here with my co-host, Sean Wilson. Hello, hello everybody. And our fine producer, Kyle Bokar. Kyle. So we are very excited to have a conversation this afternoon. Iowa Stages is a podcast that talks about not only shows, but the decisions and the people who make up those series of choices that lead you to an amazing theatrical event. We're excited to have with us uh, two of the stars of Iowa Stages production of A Doll's House Part 2 by Lucas Nath. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves. Can we start with you, Carrie? Sure. Um, I'm Carrie Scram, and I'm playing Nora in A Doll's House Part 2. Mm-hmm. And I am Ashley Schaefer, and I am playing Emmy in A Doll's House Part 2. So A Doll's House Part 2, whenever you're listening to this, was running at the Stoner Theater from October 3rd through October 13th of 2019, because the beauty of the interwebs is you could come across this in 2050, <laughs> right? when we're all living virtually anyway. Uh, so when we're doing the revival and bring everybody back. <laughs> <laughs> Doll's House Part pa- Part five. <laughs> the return. Yeah, yeah, it's like... Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, then it, there'll be a Hobbs and Shaw spinoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's... Hobbs and Shaw. It's, an, it's a fascinating play. Lucas Nath, obviously, is an award-winning playwright who's famous for The Christians and a number of other for terrific shows. But it has done the almost unthinkable in renaming a 140-year-old play because the Ibsen piece now gets continually referred to as A Doll's House Part One. Uh-huh. Uh, Ibsen, of course, wrote the masterpiece about Nora, a young woman who discovers that her marriage is not the loving partnership that she thought it was. Uh, Spoilers. Oh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Well, you 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 don't have to see the first part to understand the second, but it does help a little give a context (laughs) as to why it's weird that she's back home 15 years later. So, spoilers again. Doll's House, Nora leaves in 1879 Norway. She makes the choice, the radical, scandalous choice at the time to leave her family, leave her children, leave her husband, leave her home, and strike out for a new life on her own. Uh, Ibsen's play was a massive international scandal at the time. Uh, Copies of it were uh, sold out. Uh, It was, oddly enough, although he was Norwegian, written in Danish, as were many of the works in Norway at the time. Um, And some of this information is uh, coming from Wayne Kisher, who's done a little bit of dramaturgy for us on it. So huge international scandal was a sellout success across Europe, sparked an entire conversation about women's roles, about women's uh, place in society, about the way society treats women. And fascinatingly, Lucas Nath in 2017 decides that he is going to write a sequel because, you know, There's no new ideas, so let's just write a sequel to A Doll's House. (laughs) Uh, And he does, and sets it 15 years later. Nora comes back. No one has seen her in 15 years. What has she been doing? How have the family held up? Uh, Obviously, uh, the children, who uh, in the first play are quite young, uh, have aged significantly, and uh, Emmy has grown up a little bit in her own. So... uh, just for context, we'll, we'll give a little bit of plot for folks, but really we want to talk about uh, with you guys is what kind of choices or, or challenges or – sorry about that uh, – for punching the microphone there. Uh, <laughs> That's a pretty high-tech setup. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem when you talk with your hands and you're being recorded. Um, we'll talk about the choices, the challenges. It's a little, we'll get into the process a little bit behind it, not just talk pro- plot and all that sort of thing because they'll get all of that when they come to see it mm-hmm. uh, or the revival in 2050. <laughs> um, But just briefly, tell us a little bit about each of your characters. Uh, We'll start with you, Carrie. Uh, You've got a pretty significant role in this. You're playing... Nora. Yeah, okay. So um, another thing to keep in mind um, that I'm not, you know, that I hope audiences keep in mind is that, yeah, it was 1879. Women didn't have a lot of options. So the fact that Nora walked out that door, she had no money, she left her family, she left her home, she did not have... A lot of options. She couldn't just go start temping somewhere. <laughs> she had women had very limited options for careers, so that's something to keep in mind. And, and so and beyond even careers, I mean, you you talk a little bit in the play about there are things that you as a you know if you're married, you're not allowed to basically have a separate life or or right. what are the things that you can't uh, do when you're married? Sign a contract without your husband's can't approval. Conduct any business yeah. without can't your husband being money. there. Can't borrow money. That's the whole crux of the first play, right? 
So, right, right. right. Yeah. And it's weird a little bit to think. I mean, the whole scandal in the first play is Nora takes a loan, which mm-hmm. right. nowadays... She, is, signed, she signed a contract without the consent of her husband. Right, and nowadays yeah. you get 15 of those in every mail. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like, here, try That'd our credit loan for anything. Right, right. right exactly. Yeah. Nobody wants you to actually pay for anything. Oh, they right. want to take the interest. So, but So it's a scandal that she yes. took a loan. Yes, and... Um, so when Nora comes back, and I'm not going to spoil it, but she comes back for a reason. She has um, something she needs, and that's what brings her home. Um, and then she has an encounter with um, these people that she hasn't seen for 15 years, um, Anne-Marie, the housekeeper slash nanny. She has an encounter with Torvald. She has a meeting with Emmy. And Emmy is? Emmy is my grown daughter now who doesn't remember me. I like And it. Torvald's your husband, right? Or the, hus- the hus- mm-hmm. Nora's husband. Correct. Yes. Your, the, the, that she left. That I left. That she left. Yes, and um, played by Tom Garrity. Tom Garrity, in yes. The show. And Cheryl um, Clark Sorry. plays uh, Anne Marie, um, who's the nanny who raised both you and Emmy. Yes, yeah, yeah. And so they all sort of take their pot shots at Nora. Um, they all have their feelings about what you did. Yeah. So uh, obviously, you're coming. You're coming at this. There's a historical difference between. Your condition as a woman in America in the 21st century Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Nora's condition as a woman in what still would have been the late 19th century, 15 years after 1879. What's the matter? 1794, 1894, something like that. Um, What was it? Was it weird to did it feel anachronistic? Was it? Um, It did not feel weird. Um, You know, one of the lovely things about this script, too, is that. the dialogue is very contemporary, so you're going to come in and see, uh, hopefully you'll take advantage of this really unique opportunity we have of being able to see um, the first Doll's House, and then either later that night or next weekend you come and see a Doll's House Part 2, and there is definitely um, a difference in the dialogue. Um, it's very um, contemporary. The um, language of the piece, The languages, too, yeah. yeah. And so, but no, it was not odd for me to um, have to find... The feelings of feeling that a woman wasn't being treated fairly or equally is, uh, what was it, Michelle Williams just gave that lovely speech at the Emmy Awards and reminded right. us all that women earn 50 cents on the dollar on average yeah. for what men earn. So, you know, these things are women still happening probably, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Certainly we have the right to sign a contract and conduct business, that sort of thing. But, yeah, there's still things going on for sure. Ashley, what about for you? I mean, is it uh, your character has obviously a different perspective on Nora's departure uh, than the the concept of self actualization or liberation that Nora's coming from? Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, without tipping too much, about who Emmy is and what that was like for you to connect with. Yeah, so Emmy is Nora's daughter, and I think in a lot of ways she's she's similar to Nora. Uh, But I think the main thing that shaped her life is the absence of her mother and the decision that her mother chose to leave and chose to end her marriage and walk away from her children. So, so much of Emmy's views and ideals of the world are shaped by the fact that her mother made this pinnacle decision. So she, she has a very different feeling towards, towards marriage and family and, and how she looks at the world um, because of of kind of what she missed out on and, and what was absent from her life. Was she someone that you that you sort of clicked with right away? Was she a, did she feel like she was a ways away from you and you had to build a bridge to that space or Yeah, so I think personally reading A Doll's House in in college um, I was kind of even one of those people that thought how dare Nora leave her children? You know, her husband is one thing, but her, her mm-hmm. children yes. and, and and feeling those things. Um, so Emmy, obviously, uh, didn't feel too far away from me in that sense. And um, so, so when you read the original, yeah. you, weren't, you weren't like, go Nora. No, it no. It was more like, whoa, wait a yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, you know, obviously reading it more and getting more immersed into it and, and, and seeing... Um, all of the events that lead up to Nora leaving, you know, I will let you make the decision on whether or not you think that's the right choice. Um, mm-hmm. But there's there's definitely a, a split line to it. It's not black and white. It's not easy to say, yes, she should have left or no, she shouldn't have left. And so I think it, it'll be interesting for people to see that and and kind of make that decision for themselves. But but yeah, I was torn when I read it. You know, you want her to, to be free and be living her own life and have have these, um, you know, these rights that women deserve and, and the ability to live a better life. 
with. But then on the other side, it's, you know, here's this family that she was leaving behind and, and the damage that that will cause. And, and I think the beauty of A Doll's House Part Two is for so long, for, you know, over 100 years, nobody's known what that's looked like. Right. Everyone's right. been sitting around, you know, having conversations about, you know, what happened to Nora? What do you think? Right. What do you think happened? And what happened to the family? And and in Doll's House Part Two, you get to see um, exactly what happened and, and the decisions that um, that caused and the effects that happened. Right. And that's what I was just going to say. The brilliance of the script is that he um, he's using this almost as a vehicle um, for people to have this discussion about um, about marriage and about walking away from from what you had to create something new. And um, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> but it was um, it's it was, well. That's what I was going to say. He's very smart. And he does not talk down to his audience at all, which I think um, it is lovely and I think encourages people to have this conversation when the play is over. So, so you were both familiar with the original before you tackled this particular yeah. process. Were yes. you familiar with Nath, the, with the playwright? Mm-hmm. Not as much with Nath for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've heard of, of the Christians, and um, I've known people who put on the production. I have not had the opportunity to see it. So yeah. I was not very familiar with his so work. So good. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> what, that's what I've heard. Um, and I've heard... Um, and you, you, uh, you, uh, you, you know someone who directed that show, if I... <laughs> I believe I do. Yeah, I think you do. I believe I do. <laughs> you know, that's another example of him um, tackling something. And, and I think um, in the Christians and in a doll's house, uh, Nate is also very respectful of each side. And no, both sides and both plays make really good points, and sometimes they make not so great points. And I think that's what will encourage conversations. What do you mean not so great points? What um, well, yeah. so, or maybe something people won't agree with okay. necessarily. Gotcha. A, yeah. a differing point of view or um, he plays both sides yes. he plays yeah. both sides fairly if do you think yes. Does, yes. does he come down on one side or the other does he does, I don't does think the play so. have a perspective so I don't think the Christians no. did and yeah. from what I remember so we did a reading of Doll's House 2 was it last year Scriptees it was two years ago was it two years yeah. ago and from my recollection of that it was very Fair handed, you know, like were you, I think it were was, you in that, Sean? I didn't see that. No, I just watched it. Just I just watched it. it. Did you do the reading? I did it, and Jonathan Delima, oh, and right. Kim yeah, Grimaldi, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, Tiffany played Emmy. Oh, Tiffany, right. she read Emmy. Tiffany yeah. Flory, who is playing Nora in our production mm-hmm. of A Doll's House. We should mention we have a ringer in the room also because Sean Wilson is playing Dr. Rank yes. in Doll's House <laughs> Part One. But I'm not in part, Dr. Rank's not in Part Two. No. I'll, let you, I'll let you figure that one out later. Yeah. <laughs> No spoilers. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I know. People have only had 140 years to read it, I think, by now. Right. They, they should you know. know. Yeah. They, should, they really should know. <laughs> if, you're, if you're trying to approach Ibsen spoiler-free, right, you're right. doing something wrong. <laughs> well, it's funny. Like, if we, it's, like there's, we still need to give spoiler alerts for the, uh, something that's been out that long. Like, it's ridiculous. Right? I know, right? It's, yeah. Well, um, but interest, interestingly, yeah. uh, the, the print success, success of A Doll's House, the, the, the run sold out almost straight away. So audiences mm. would have come to the theater – having read the play. Right. So that was a different practice mm. than we do now where yeah. you might you might buy a script if you like a show or, or, or if you're in the theater you might be right, reading shows right. that you're in, that your your people are passing around but nowadays we don't uh, we don't read screenplays before we go see right. you know uh, civil war or whatever. Yeah. Um, I I I thought how many how many shows have sequels? Like theater shows like plays. Can you well, think, I, mean, I was trying I, to think of that today. Of I like, mean, Shakespeare did a ton yeah, of it. Yeah, sure. Sure. yeah, right, there's right. Three Henry the Sixth. There's two Henry the Fourth. Right. No, no, no. I'm talking about you know. something other than that. Like something that's akin to this. Of like, there's a part it's, one, and then there's like a, there was a sequel later. There's a fascinating sort of renaissance right now. Um, Carrie and I had lunch with a. a ISU professor mm-hmm. who is uh, his Casey area Murphy. is in uh, Casey Murphy. Who mm-hmm. thank you. Who's whose area is sort of rewrites, updates, uh, sequels to to work. That's kind sure. of like his field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a whole thing right now with um, rewritten Ibsen. Uh, I was yeah. reading some some pieces in the uh, the Guardian from. Oh, well, I've seen some pieces rewritten. Yeah. that's for sure. I mean, certainly there was uh, Hedatron Hedetr- 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 was big when I was in New York, yeah. which is sort of a robot version of Hedda Gobbler. Very. <laughs> odd. Uh, there's uh, because why not? There's a called, on pie. Yeah, right. It's, mm-hmm. Of course, that's you know. Oddly <laughs> well, enough, is it with the Fringe Festival? What I was what I was getting at though is that you know for the most part, and this is what I'm most interested in, like how much how uh, how much more helpful it was in that you know when you're an actor and you're coming in to do a, a show, you have a script, you have the script, right. right? And the script is what's in front of you. 
in your guys' case, you have the script, which is what right. uh, Nate wrote. And, but you also have, like, the whole backstory. It's not just, like, lines right. written out for you or mm-hmm. what you think happened. Right. You know, you have that. So was that helpful to you? Because I know that you guys came to some of our practices mm-hmm. uh, and watched. And, and did that inform, like... Uh, did, did, did you watching uh, the, the five-year-old Emmy? <laughs> yeah, did that, yes, did so that? informative. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I but I do think picked I, up some of her mannerisms. I do you know, think like watching, that. yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I do think watching Tiffany though, as kind of mm-hmm. young Nora, yeah. um, helped me to see, you know, even it's kind of the nature versus nurture. You know, despite Nora being out of Emmy's life as she's growing up, how much it, she does she still get from her? Mm-hmm. How many of her mannerisms and the way that she goes about oh, life and her outlook? How much of that is is just dictated by nurture? So it was interesting for me watching Tiffany, and that was one of the things that I that I was interested in doing is you know seeing how she approaches young Nora essentially, mm-hmm. and and how that can you know help shape Emmy's character as well. And it, we should point out too, uh, Iowa Stage Theater Company is doing these shows in repertory, in repertory. on yes. the same set. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is not the common practice. This is, I mean, uh, Doll's House Part 2 is one of the mo- top ten most produced plays in America in, the, in this current season. And it is n- only one other company has produced these shows in rep, and that's the Denver Center Theater Company. And they did it opening on September 6th of 2019. Mm-hmm. So, like, only three weeks before ours right, opens. Right. It's not customary for them to be done together. Um, for the three of you who are in these shows, was do you feel like that was an advantage? Was it a strain to, to try and be doing these together? Or? I love it. Yeah. I love it. And I love that. I think I said to you at the read through, I'm like, if I wasn't in this, I would be totally taking advantage of seeing these on the same day. And, yeah. and I hope that um, theater goers do that. And, and maybe people who aren't used to going to the theater take advantage of this really special thing that's going on right now. Um, I love it because I feel like. Um, well, to answer your question before, Sean, I, I love having um, all of that information. I oh, God. come in. Yep. <laughs> Someone has arrived. <laughs> Suddenly, we're on Jeopardy. Oh, oh my God! God. Wow, well, we better get oh, my to God. places. Is that, is this is like uh, put up, keep your hands in the ride at all times. It was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up! It's an Iowa Stage <laughs> <Yeah>. podcast. <laughs> so what are we saying? Going back so to yeah. I just I love having um, I love having that backstory. I love knowing, knowing Nora's backstory. Again, uh, um, Doll's House Part Two stands alone. It is its own play. It's its own story. Sure, sure. You don't even need to know a Doll's House Part yeah, One. You, you, get you get the story. Everything that yes. you need in the course of that. But I mean, yes. as an actor. Uh, yes. Filming, yeah. I, yes. And as the actor, I love. Um, I loved. Actually, I loved really watching, especially that last scene, to see what... In Doll's uh, the, House 1. Yes, in Doll's House 1, we watched a rehearsal to see the, um, the climax happen, that argument between um, Nora and Torvald, um, to remind me, you know, how awful it was <laughs> and what yeah. prompted her to leave. And um, so, you know, I really, I loved that. I love having that. Um, so, yeah. And I do feel a little, like a little bit of a nerd saying this, but um, every time I think about it being in rep and the potential that somebody could come see the show, see Doll's House, you know, during the day and come see Doll's House Part Two at night, I just get like the the Harry Potter vibe. I'm like, yeah, we're like we're like Harry Potter, you know. Um, <laughs> God, what's the what's the whole title of Harry Potter on Bro- and the Cursed Child? Oh, you know, okay. where it's like a two parter. Yeah, 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 Essentially, yeah, yeah. what yeah, this yeah. is yeah. like, oh, you would need to commit to seeing yeah, both parts a day. It. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. not seven hundred dollars so lucky for for our audience but it's the same kind of experience you can go see (laughs) you can go see both parts in the same day the exact same magic magic. absolutely right I will have to do a little searching. That may have been the first time Ibsen's been compared to Harry Potter. but hey. um, <laughs> Probably not. Uh, they're very similar, <laughs> it seems to me. I mean, I'm only in the play, but that's what I feel. Right. And I am wearing a wizard robe throughout you, most I, of it. Actually, this is, actually you, you make a good point. Very close to um, it. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit, too. Because you're coming at this from two different perspectives in terms of your relationships to Iowa Stage. Carrie, you uh-huh. are a company member. You were a company member with one of our heritage companies, mm-hmm. Repertory Theater of Iowa, before they merged with Stage West in 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, you've tackled uh, uh, a lot of the sort of classic roles yeah. uh, um, through the years. Um, 
you're coming at this from the perspective of a company member. Right. Uh, so I'm curious for you, Ashley, you're joining mm-hmm. us for the first time. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're uh, recently uh, moved to Iowa from Chicago, mm-hmm. where you've been for a while. Tell us a little, give us a little bit about your background yeah. and what it's been like sort of you getting your feet wet in this yeah. this environment anyway. So I grew up in the Des Moines area. I'm from Ankeny. Um, went to Iowa State and then moved to Chicago. Yes, went <laughs> so far away from for college. 20 minutes Absolutely. Away. Yes, the 30-minute drive up to Ames, Iowa is treacherous. Um, and then I moved to Chicago and um, was in Chicago for the past four years mm-hmm. and then decided to move back home to where family is. So I've uh, done things in the Des Moines area kind of my whole life since I was six years old, I believe, starting with the Ankeny Community Theater and then the Des Moines Playhouse and um, did some stuff up at Iowa State during my time there and mm-hmm. did a couple of Stage West productions before I moved yeah, to Chicago. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. I keep that's right. Yes. That. So um, which was so fun. Um, and then did a couple of things in Chicago and, and moved back. So, um, you know, it's been, it's been so great to get back into this theater community that I love. There are so many people here that um, I just cherish so much. And the work that we do in Des Moines is 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 amazing for a smaller community um and this I, this experience has been great and all the actors that I've been working with are so talented and and the production crew and and everything has been even Garrity even Tom Garrity, Garrity plays Torvald. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. No, Tom but Garrity's he's also a longtime company member yes. and a, quite a fine actor. We and should very clarify for the <laughs> posterity. Yes. I would but like no, to. I, 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 no, yeah, sorry, Carrie. Last thing, I just think I think the care that, that the Des Moines theater community takes with the work that it decides to put on is is kind of second to none for a lot of the theaters that I've I've worked with. And so it's a joy to be back here and be working with Iowa Stage for the first time. So it's been That's great. great. Yeah. I'm so excited about that. Carrie, you've, uh, I mean, both of you have long, long roots in the, in the community in terms of that. Uh, how do you see this show, which is a newer show, mm-hmm. uh, fitting into sort of what Iowa Stage is trying to do in terms of combining those two, the missions of RTI and Stage West, you know, going from the classics to the cutting right, edge? Right, right. Kind of fits right in there, doesn't it? <laughs> it's sort of this play that has its roots in the classics with, with, uh, the original one, um, but like I said earlier, the the language is very contemporary. The writing is very contemporary, and um, and we are working on the same set that Doll's House is on. Um, it's a little bit different, but uh, same set. Um, and the costumes are period, but our mannerisms aren't necessarily. So it's this really wonderful blend of this sort of classical feel, and I, and I think the audiences might experience that when we you know when we first begins, and then they'll quickly <laughs> see that. There's some language. <laughs> work, too. You guys are working with Jody Jinks. As the director. Yes. So yeah. You mentioned the costume. Susanna Douth, you know, Chloris Award winner Love last her. year for Lion in mm-hmm. Winter, yes. which uh, Carrie was also in, which Sean directed. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jay Jagham, the, the multiple Chloris Award winner, unless I'm mistaken. No, yes. he's multiple. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, he has earrings made out of his Chloris. <laughs> <laughs> A match necklace, I think. That's yeah, great. he's going for a whole belt, I think. <laughs> um, you know, d- doing some extraordinary work in what is a fairly challenging space for this kind of where the Stoner Theater is a great performance space. I mean, Sage West was here for years, but it's a it's an interestingly shallow thrust that presents yeah. some challenges for yeah. this kind of staging. Um, uh, to talk about the, just that environment a little bit, that set that you guys are working on and mm-hmm. working with. I mean, you're in corsets, which is a, a whole other thing for people. Who <laughs> well, how about just coming that back is to a the whole other thing. You haven't been right. in this. So I, yeah. For me, it was I haven't been here since at least 2012. And I'm not even sure I've seen that many. I saw some shows, I think, past that point, but I haven't performed here. I haven't performed here so in a long time. so weird coming been, back. Play? Yeah, it was yeah in the in next the room, room. vibrator yeah. play. Yeah, which was the first show I think well, I saw you in. What was the last show that show you I did? Yeah. Well, you were next to normal. That was here. Yep, and that was after 2013, 2014. Yeah. Bill and Bob, maybe. 13, oh, Bill, Bill, Bill W and Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. Car- Carla directed that. Bill W and Dr. Bob. Parts of whose set live on today in many other sets. <laughs> Are they? I think that, yeah. Yeah. That's did your, we not burn those yet? Okay. Oh, no. Jay, Jay and I counted. They've been in either, either eight or nine shows. Yes. Those, those pillars have Hey, been. recycle. Hey, we have to be thrifty in the theater. <laughs> so, yeah, in the Stoner, it's a, it's a unique space with, with a lot of history to mm-hmm. it. What's it like being back in that room? 
I don't. It was lovely. I, we, I mean, this tonight's our first tech night. Oh, so that's right. You guys haven't been. We just here walked yet. in yeah. and saw, yeah. Yeah, oh, saw right. it in all its what was glory. Your so. you saw pictures of the set, of course. What was the reaction to seeing it in the space? Oh, I walked in and I was like, <gasps> it's. Be- I mean, it's. Beautiful. It looks like a jewelry box. It changes I mean, the yes, room, really. doesn't it? Absolutely. It, it yes. The mood. The yeah, for sure. Well, Jay does way. that. Jay yeah. just can do yeah, that. Yeah, fantastic. So, yeah. And Jody Jenks, who's directing this, uh, really interesting uh, uh, resume and background. She's been on Broadway. She's done uh, the um, Rude Mechanicals, which is one of the premier device theater troops out of Austin, Texas. She's a member with them. She's taught. She's mm-hmm. really interesting mm-hmm. background. What was it like working with her? Her, her work style is really interesting to me. Um, Yes, and I um, I just actually sent her an email last night, and I and I just said it's been such a pleasure <laughs> working with her. She's um, very lovely. Um, we, I, I will just say this play is hard. Mm-hmm. This is not your typical. I was trying to tell this to my parents the other day, and I'm not sure I can well, articulate if that. Talk a little bit about what it's like on the page because yes, it's unique. Yes, it's not a back and forth dialogue. Um, it's not a normal back and forth dialogue that you'll see in a doll's house. There, um, everyone has a lot to say, and so people will speak for a few pages. But it's not necessarily in a paragraph form, right? And actually, Nath gives very specific directions in yes. a doll's it's house part prose, two, right? Like from what I remember, it, it's like very it's more like prose like. Uh, yes, yeah, poetry and, prose. It's just yeah. like very so, the lines kind of like. Separated. Yes. Right? Yes. He, yes. He has delineated. He, yeah. And he gives directions. You know, if, the, if there's a dash, it means this. If there's an ellipsis, it means this. And so, I think Ashley and I yeah. talk about this mm-hmm. quite a bit. We went through and we all sort of memorized our lines in this manner. Um, I found that at some point you have to let a little bit of that go, <laughs> or you can start to sound very um, mechanical. You just you. You've memorized it, and so you're reciting mm-hmm. it the same way over and over again. I finally just kind of had to let a little bit of that go. But it stays with you, so you're getting mm-hmm. the rhythms in there still. Mm-hmm. Um, it, that was hard to tackle. Um, but Jody has been really patient with us, and um, and I feel <laughs> this has been such a lovely experience because it's such a new play, so nobody has a history with it, really. Any of us did. Uh, maybe you've seen it or you've read it, but we've all, we're all tackling it for the first time. And we're all sort of discovering this together. So mm-hmm. it's been this really lovely mm-hmm. theatrical experience that you don't get to have that often of all, all learning a play together. Jody's in it with us. We're all trying new things. And um, it's just been a very encouraging and a very um, – we've all been very patient working with each other and trying new things. It's just – it's really lovely. Yeah, and I think I think the beauty, too, is um, we are all able to have such open and honest conversations about – these are these are not easy kind of topics to mm-hmm. to tackle um, the things that we are discussing in this play and that right. we're putting out there. And so I think the ability that we have had and and the environment that Jody has created for us to be able to discuss these things so openly and honestly and to really get to kind of the root of not only what what these characters feel but what we feel and mm-hmm. how and how that infuses into how we want to um, produce and, and put on the show. So it's been great. Well, it's been fascinating, Tom. I just I love these. Play- I'm with you guys. I think they're fantastic. And they, you know, while they are dealing with the same characters, they are so like Luke. The Doll's House Two is different. It's much more conversation. It mm-hmm. goes right directly to the point where Doll's House is so sort of effusive about like there's just more plot going on. Mm-hmm. Whereas he's, right, right, you know. Um, and it's such a it's such a cool thing I think for people to be able to come and see both of those shows at the same time. And different theatrical styles. I mean, Doll's yeah. House yeah, is, is realism. Sure. You know, yeah. it's like right. it's right. like what it's like, it's yeah. naturalistic yeah. experience. Right. Uh, and Doll's House Part Two is much more. Uh, it, it, it's a it's a more of a of a of a boxing ring. It's more of a playground. It's more of mm-hmm. a it's a it's a place for these ideas to contest rather than right. just a naturalistic conversation. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but that's, I think that's all the time that we have. This has been great, guys. Today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. We're thank excited you. about the shows. Thank you, thank Ashley. You. Thank, thank you, Carrie. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Kyle Bocard. Thank you, you know, Kyle Bocard. Woo. DJ Kyle over here. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it on. Thank you, Sean. And, and thank this has you, been, Matt. This has been Iowa Stages, a podcast about Central Iowa Theater from the Iowa Stage Theater Company.
I think it's. I think men need to wear corsets I'm, as well. I'm, I'm, it's, right it's, now. A, it's a unique Honestly. experience when you've had that opportunity. You really don't forget what that what that fe- feels like physically. We also should mention Jim Tremper is doing some really interesting stuff with the lights. The, the mood and the look of the piece is terrific. Well, thank you so much, guys. We appreciate your time. We thank appreciate you your work on the show. Thanks We're so. excited for thank people you. to see the show. And if they're catching this after the show, uh, I hope you saw it because if not, you really missed out. Uh, that's a Doll's House happening at the Stoner Theater of Des Moines Performing Arts, opening September 27th, closing on the 12th of sure. October. Yep. And uh, you can check out tickets in the whole season at iowastage.org. So, Jennifer Mistrala, Tiffany Flory, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you thank guys. you. Thanks. All right. This has been Iowa Stages, a podcast about Central Iowa Theater from the Iowa Stage Theater Company.